Welcome to the inductive study circles of International Business School at Hangzhou University of Applied Sciences. Today, we are going to learn how to get a chi-square. First, what is the contingency table? How to get the degree of freedom for the chi-square? And then, how to calculate your chi-square? And what does this mean? First, let's look at contingency table. We also call this as cross-break table. For example, this table. We have male and female students. They are in junior high school and senior high schools. So we have two columns and we also have two rows. When you describe the contingency table, normally you use the rows times the columns. So in this case, we say two by two tables because we have two rows and two columns. And for each row and columns, we can calculate the total of that. For example, we have 100 males, and 40 of them are in the junior high school. 60 of them are in the senior high school. We also can say that we have 100 junior high school students. Among them, 40 are males, and 60 are females. So in total, actually, we have 200 students. After we have done the contingency table, we know how to get our degree of freedom for the chi-square. It comes from the number of rows minus 1 to times the number of columns minus 1. Go back to our previous example, this 2 by 2 table. So the degree of freedom will be 1 times 1. So that will be 1. Suppose we have this table. Now it is a 3 by 3 table because we have 3 rows and 3 columns. So degree of freedom comes from 2 times 2. That will be 4. Now we can uh, go on to calculate our chi-square. Now let's look at one question on page 581. That's a combination of 11, 7 and 11, 8. From the question, we can read uh, the information as shown in this contingency table. We have five age groups. We also have three future activities. Purchase frequently, seldom purchase, never purchase. And this contingency table is a 3 by 5 table because we have three rows and five columns. In order to get the chi-square, the first step is to formulate your hypothesis. In comparison with our previous study, the hypothesis for the chi-square is different. You need to use your words to formulate that, rather than the Greek letters. So the new hypothesis will be, there is no relationship between future activity and age group. That means these two variables, future activity and age groups, are independent. You can also say, future activities does not depend on the age groups. And the alternative hypothesis is there is a relationship between future activity and age group. In other words, future activities depends on people's age groups. And the alpha level is given in the question, which is 0 0.01. The second step is to calculate the expected frequency. And we first need to calculate the row total. So for first row, we have 101 person. For the second row, we have 126. While for the third row, we have 148. And then we calculate the column total. For each column, we have the same numbers in this case, 75. And now let's look at this number, 375. This number is in red. We call this is the total of the total. That means, in our research, we have in total 375 person. And in order to get the, uh, the expected frequency, we need to use the row total times the column total and divided by the total of the total. So for first cell, 12, we need to do it as 101 times 75 divided by 375. Then we get 20.2. We do it also for the second one. 
and in this case because the column total are the same so your expected frequency for uh, the rows are the same and then you do it for each cell all the numbers in red are now your expected frequency now you can go to the third step to calculate the chi-square the equation for the chi-square is sigma fo that's observed frequency minus fe expected frequency and square it and divide it by fe expected frequency so in this case 20.2 is fe and 12 is fo so the first number is 12 minus 20.2 and square it divided by 20.2 and you do it for each cell and then you get all these numbers after that you add uh, them up so your chi-square will be 32.27 and the next step is to find a critical chi-square in order to find the critical chi-square you need to use the degree of freedom as we have said before it comes from 3 minus 1 times 5 minus 1 so 8 is your degree of freedom and the alpha level 0 0.01 and you can go to table A5 appendix table A5 which is on page A18 and A19 and you can find when alpha is 0 0.001 and degree of freedom is 8 the critical chi-square will be 20.09 and our own chi-square value is 32.27 which is larger than this number and that means our chi-square is outside of the acceptance region we need to reject the neural hypothesis and we can conclude there is a significant correlation between future activity and age groups so people's future activity significantly depends on their age groups. This is what we have learned from the chi-square. What is the contingency table, how to get a degree of freedom, and how to calculate the chi-square. For more video explanations, you can go to the Blackboard, or you can go to YouTube with the keywords Hansa, IBS, and Inductive Statistics. Thanks for watching that.